let's step inside the pearl processing factory and discover how natural ocean pearls are transformed into luxury fashion pieces. So you're about to witness something most people never see. A journey that takes years to complete. A transformation so delicate, so precise, that one wrong move can destroy months of careful work. This is the story of how a simple oyster becomes a piece of luxury that people treasure for generations. Welcome inside the Pearl Factory. From the moment a tiny bead enters an oyster's shell to the second a finished pearl necklace leaves a high-end boutique, you're about to see the entire process. No shortcuts, no secrets held back. Just the raw, fascinating truth about one of nature's most beautiful creations. Let's start where it all begins, on a pearl farm somewhere between the ocean and human ambition. Picture thousands of oysters suspended underwater in mesh baskets, swaying gently with the current. These aren't wild oysters. They're carefully bred, selected for one purpose, to create the perfect pearl. It starts with spawning. Pearl farmers collect eggs and sperm from their highest quality oysters, the ones that have already proven they can produce beautiful nacre, that lustrous coating that gives pearls their signature glow. These genetic superstars are essentially the breeding stock. The eggs and sperm are combined in controlled conditions, creating larvae that will eventually become the next generation of pearl-producing oysters. These baby oysters spend their early days in protected hatchery conditions before being released into open water. As they grow, they attach themselves to rocks or other stable surfaces in the water. This is where patience becomes everything. Because before an oyster can produce a pearl, it needs to mature. We're talking two to three years just to reach the right age and size. Farmers can't rush this. Nature sets the timeline. But here's where it gets interesting. While natural pearls form completely by chance when an irritant accidentally gets inside an oyster, cultured pearls are different. They're still real pearls, formed by the same natural process, but with human intervention at the start. And that intervention is called nucleation. Nucleation is part surgery, part art form. A skilled technician makes a precise incision into the oyster's soft tissue, specifically into an area called the gonad or mantle, then comes the delicate part. They insert a small nucleus, usually a perfectly round bead made from freshwater mussel shell, along with a tiny piece of mantle tissue from a donor oyster. That piece of tissue is crucial because it contains the cells that will trigger nacre production. Think about this for a second. One technician can nucleate hundreds, sometimes thousands of oysters. But this isn't easy work. For saltwater pearls like Akoya, the technician is working with incredibly small spaces and needs surgical precision. One slip, one tear in the wrong place, and that oyster might reject the nucleus or worse, die. For freshwater pearls, the process is slightly different. Instead of a bead nucleus, technicians insert just tiny pieces of mantle tissue, sometimes up to 25 grafts per muscle. That's why freshwater pearls can produce multiple pearls at once. After nucleation, the oysters need recovery time. Some will reject the implant immediately. Others might get sick or stressed. But most, if the procedure was done correctly, will accept the nucleus and begin the magic. The oyster starts coating that foreign object with nacre, layer after microscopic layer. It's the oyster's defense mechanism, its way of protecting itself from irritation. And ironically, that defense mechanism creates something humans consider priceless. Now comes the waiting game. For small pearls, it might take six months to a year. For the large, luxurious South Sea pearls, we're talking two to three years minimum. During this entire time, farmers are monitoring constantly. Water temperature, salinity levels, food supply, everything matters. A storm can devastate an entire crop. Pollution can kill thousands of oysters overnight. Red tide, caused by explosive phytoplankton blooms, can suffocate entire farms by depleting oxygen in the water. Pearl farming is gambling against nature. Farmers might nucleate 10,000 oysters only to harvest half that number. And of those that survive, maybe 20% will produce pearls that actually meet market standards. That's why quality pearls command the prices they do. The process is expensive, risky, 
and completely dependent on factors no human can control. But let's say everything goes right. The oysters survive, the nacre layers build up beautifully, and harvest time arrives. Farmers carefully remove the oysters from the water and begin the extraction process. This part requires incredible skill. The technician must gently open the oyster without damaging it. Because here's something fascinating. If the pearl is good quality, they can insert a new, larger nucleus into the same pearl sac and use that oyster again. It's like getting a second chance at an even bigger pearl. The pearl is carefully removed using specialized surgical tools. And the moment it emerges, you can see what years of patience have created. Some pearls come out glowing with perfect luster. Others might be misshapen, discolored, or covered in blemishes. This is the moment of truth for the farmer. Did those years of work pay off? But harvesting is just the beginning of the next phase. What happens next determines whether a pearl becomes part of a high-end Mikimoto necklace or gets ground into cosmetic powder. The harvested pearls are immediately rinsed in fresh water to remove any organic residue from the oyster. They're still raw at this point, covered in a film that needs to be cleaned away. The pearls are soaked in mild cleaning solutions, sometimes with gentle agitation to enhance their natural shine. This isn't about altering the pearl, it's about revealing what's already there. After cleaning comes the first major sorting. Workers separate pearls by size, usually measured in millimeters. Then they sort by shape. Are they perfectly round, slightly off round? Baroque, which means irregular, each category has its own value. Perfectly round pearls are the rarest and most valuable, but Baroque pearls have become increasingly popular in contemporary jewelry design because of their unique organic shapes. Next comes color sorting. Pearls come in an astonishing range of natural colors. White, cream, pink, lavender, golden, even black. The color depends on the oyster species the water conditions, and sometimes just pure genetic luck. Tahitian pearls display exotic shades of black, green, and purple, while South Sea pearls come in luxurious white and golden tones. Freshwater pearls offer the widest variety, from white to pink to deep purple. Then comes surface quality inspection. Workers examine each pearl under bright lights, looking for blemishes, wrinkles, spots, any imperfections. High-grade pearls have at least 95% of their surface clean, with no visible imperfections. These perfect specimens get set aside for premium jewelry. Pearls with minor flaws go into mid-tier pieces. Heavily flawed pearls might be used in crafts or ground into pearl powder for cosmetics and supplements. Luster is everything in pearl grading. That mirror-like reflection, that inner glow, it's what separates exceptional pearls from mediocre ones. Graders look at how sharply they can see their reflection in the pearl's surface. Can they see clear details? Or is the reflection soft and blurry? The sharper and brighter, the higher the grade. Now here's where it gets technical. The jewelry industry uses several grading systems. The most common is the A to AAAA scale, where AAAA represents the finest quality pearls with excellent luster, nearly perfect round shapes, and surfaces that are 95 to 99% clean. Some premium brands use even stricter systems. Mikimoto's Hanadama designation, for example, is reserved for Akoya pearls that meet incredibly rigorous standards and come with independent laboratory certification. After grading, many pearls undergo enhancement treatments. This is where the industry gets interesting. Some pearls receive bleaching treatments to achieve uniform color or remove slight discolorations. This is standard practice and doesn't necessarily reduce value. It's about creating consistency across batches of pearls. Others might be polished gently to enhance their luster. Some darker pearls receive irradiation or heat treatments to deepen their color. Here's the crucial part. These treatments are accepted industry practice when disclosed. The problem is when treatments aren't disclosed or when low quality pearls are heavily processed to look premium. That's why buying from reputable sources matters. Now comes one of the most time-consuming steps, drilling. For necklaces and bracelets, pearls are drilled completely through the center. For earrings and pendants, they're only half drilled. 
and this isn't just drilling a hole. The drill must go perfectly through the center while avoiding any weak spots or blemishes. Before drilling, a mark is made at the drilling point, usually at the location of the heaviest flaw to hide imperfections. It's strategic, turning a potential weakness into hidden placement. The drilling process requires precision machinery. If the drill goes in at the wrong angle or applies too much pressure, the pearl can crack or shatter. Remember, these pearls represent years of work and significant investment. One mistake is costly. After drilling, we arrive at matching, arguably the most tedious part of the entire process. For a single 16-inch pearl necklace, manufacturers might need to sort through more than 10,000 pearls to find 50 or 60 that match perfectly in size, color, luster, and surface quality. No two pearls are identical. So creating a cohesive necklace requires meticulous pairing of pearls with similar characteristics. This is why perfectly matched pearl strands command premium prices. Someone spent hours, sometimes days, comparing thousands of pearls to create that seamless gradient from the center stone to the clasp. When you see a high-end pearl necklace where every pearl seems to flow perfectly into the next, you're looking at extraordinary skill and patience. Once matched, the pearls are temporarily strung together to keep the set intact. At this point, they're sold to jewelry manufacturers or retailers as strands. This is where the pearl's journey intersects with the world of luxury fashion. Enter the jewelry designers and luxury brands. Companies like Mikimoto, Tiffany, Tasaki, and Yoko London have built empires on pearl jewelry. But what separates a luxury pearl piece from a standard one isn't always the pearl itself. It's the design, the craftsmanship, and yes, the brand name. Mikimoto, founded by the man credited with creating the first cultured pearl, is synonymous with pearl luxury and sets incredibly strict standards for color and shine. When you buy a Mikimoto piece, you're paying for over a century of expertise, rigorous quality control, and a guarantee that you're getting exceptional pearls. But the industry is evolving. Brands like Tasaki are pushing boundaries, collaborating with contemporary designers to create bold, avant-garde pieces that challenge traditional pearl aesthetics. Through partnerships with fashion designers, Tasaki has created signature collections like Balance and Danger, redefining pearls with edgy, sculptural settings that appeal to modern luxury enthusiasts and younger generations. Yoko London specializes in rare and exceptional pearls, known for pushing creative boundaries and offering some of the largest and rarest pearls in the world with unconventional colors like deep lavender, pink, and golden hues. They're making pearls cool again, moving them from your grandmother's jewelry box to red carpet events and high fashion runways. The actual jewelry manufacturing process is its own form of art. For a pearl necklace, pearls are strung onto silk thread. Between each pearl, a tiny knot is tied. This serves two purposes. It prevents the pearls from rubbing against each other, which could damage their surface over time. And it ensures that if the strand ever breaks, you'll only lose one pearl instead of the entire necklace. The knotting is done by hand, often using a specialized needle. Each knot must be perfectly positioned, tight against the pearl, but not so tight that it stresses the drill hole. A skilled stringer can complete a necklace in under an hour but it takes years to develop that level of precision. For pearl earrings and rings, the mounting process requires different expertise. The pearl must be secured firmly to the setting, usually with a small peg that fits into the drilled hole, then glued with jewelry grade adhesive. Quality inspection ensures the pearl adheres securely, with no excess glue, tilting, or insecurity. The setting must complement the pearl without overwhelming it. Then comes the final quality control. Each piece is inspected multiple times. Are all the knots uniform? Is the clasp secure? Do the pearls sit properly in their settings? For high-end brands, pieces might be rejected for issues invisible to most people. A slight color variation, a microscopic scratch, anything that doesn't meet their exacting standards. Finally, the piece is cleaned one last time with soft cloths, carefully packaged and prepared for sale. From that initial bead inserted into an oyster years ago to this finished piece of jewelry, we're talking about a journey that involved hundreds of hands, 
countless hours of skilled labor, and a delicate balance between nature and human expertise. When someone walks into a boutique and purchases a pearl necklace, they're not just buying jewelry. They're buying years of patient cultivation, the skill of expert technicians, the eye of master graders, the artistry of jewelry designers, and ultimately, a piece of nature's beauty captured and refined through human ingenuity. The pearl industry today is massive. The global pearl jewelry market was valued at over $13 billion in recent years and continues growing as pearls experience renewed popularity across all age groups. But it's also an industry facing challenges. Environmental concerns about pearl farming practices, the need for sustainable and ethical sourcing, and protecting oyster habitats from pollution and climate change are all critical issues. Many pearl farmers now collaborate with marine biologists and conservationists to protect oyster habitats by reducing chemical runoff and pollutants in water sources. Because healthy oceans mean healthy oysters, and healthy oysters mean beautiful pearls. The industry is slowly recognizing that its future depends on environmental stewardship. So the next time you see someone wearing pearls, you'll know the story behind them. The oyster that spent years building layer after layer of nacre. The farmer who monitored water conditions daily, hoping storms wouldn't destroy the crop. The technician who carefully extracted each pearl. The sorter who examined thousands to find perfect matches. The designer who transformed those matched pearls into wearable art. From raw oyster to luxury fashion, the pearl journey is one of nature's most remarkable collaborations with human skill. It's a process that hasn't changed much in its fundamentals for over a century, yet continues to create objects of timeless beauty that transcend trends and generations. That's the magic of pearls. They're not just jewelry. They're living proof that sometimes the most beautiful things in life require patience, expertise, and a willingness to work with nature rather than against it. And that journey from sea to showcase is what makes every pearl genuinely precious.